Hello, I'm Pralina. I work for an engineering consultancy, but would love to use photography as a conservation tool to highlight the beauty and plight of endangered and threatened species. I've always been fascinated by nature. Photography gives me a medium to enjoy its splendor, to express it in my own way and to share it with others. My addiction started about five years ago when a friend sold me his 7D at a ridiculously low price. I've moved on to the 1DX and a variety of lenses, but you don't have to start there. What I enjoy about avian photography is just about anyone can do it at relatively inexpensive startup costs. You don't have to go to exotic locations to get great bird images either. Start in your garden. Plant trees that attract birds. Put up bird feeders and water and wait for that magic to happen. Garden birds are very predictable. Um, this particular dove landed on a perch just in front of a bird feeder. And by focusing on a point um, in front of the perch, I was able to get her in flight. The light comes from the afternoon sun, and the background was altered in Photoshop to get the effect I wanted. And that's a sacred ibis in flight, taken at red flag. Um, many people see these as common, ordinary birds, but what I do love about avian photography is that you can take something ordinary and make it extraordinary. And um, I love the wingspan here and I love the detail. It was taken on a very cloudy day and the white background helps bring out the effects a bit more. And what, what was the bird actually doing at that point? Well, it was coming in for a landing. Um, it was coming in to roost actually. Uh, this is one of my favorites. Um, in, with bird species. This is a white-fronted bee-eater and we've discovered a, a sand quarry where these guys nest and the antics that they get up to is amazing. So by just creating a simple perch um, the birds automatically gravitate towards it and um, they have glorious displays of flight. This is what I love about photography again. It does, as I said, take the ordinary and turns it into extraordinary things. This was taken at Austin Roberts, uh, where they have crown cranes. I went there for pied kingfishers that hover quite frequently over the dam, but on this particular day it wasn't happening. So when I turned around, I saw these beautiful cranes preening, got home and decided to do an unusual crop and to just turn it all into black and white with a bit of color in the eye. This is also probably one of everyone's favorite bird, uh, the malachite, taken at Mari Vale, where everyone goes to shoot them. Uh, I just love the colors, the detail, and the pose of the bird. This is a classic Monkwe Dam at Pilansburg, uh, where pied fishers when the dams fall, are constantly diving into the water, catching these fish, slamming them until they're dead, and then swallow it whole. Birds of prey in Dahlstrom gives everyone an opportunity to practice their in-flight shots and panning shots. There's a debate around whether these are actually baited, but for me it's about, they're doing a great job. These birds do need to learn how to fly and this particular one's coming towards the handler with a piece of chicken. The odds of getting this out on your own are almost next to nothing. This is Barney the Barn Owl, also taken at Birds of Prey. Um, what I do like about the shot is the eye contact because he's not flying in my direction. But, um, and also the expression on his face. And I find that all living things have personality and I think this brings it out quite nicely. I love this um, and I think it's quite unique to have a picture with no other penguins in the background at Simonstown because that's a breeding colony so there's constant activity. 
and uh, this is a young penguin. It couldn't be more than a couple of weeks old, waiting for its parents to come back with some food. I love gannets. Uh, this was taken at Lambert's Bay, and I like this type of photography where you create more an artistic feel to it. Uh, Lambert's Bay as well, you've got a breeding colony there of about 10,000 gannets. So choosing and, and finding the right lines is pretty difficult. So here what I did was isolate this mating pair. This was part of the mating ritual and uh, deleted quite a bit of the rest of the crowd in the background. You do a quick selection and um, you now overexposing the background to get the white effect. And you can add some, a bit of color as well just to not make it look too artificial. This is a classic uh, Giants Castle incoming shot. So what happens at Giants is there are carcasses left to feed the vultures, these cape vultures as well as the endangered bearded vulture. It does take a bit of time waiting to get the right shot, uh, but the scenery is just so beautiful that you really don't mind waiting there for hours. This is a bearded vulture. Um, it's one of those shots when you've already packed up and you think, well, just give me one last shot before I leave. And this happened um, to get a bearded vulture look directly at your camera is quite an experience. And um, I do have the full, full wingspan, but I prefer the tight crop, which makes it more dramatic. There's not much work done on that except um, a cropping and a little bit of sharpening, but the background hasn't been altered at all. I quite like the expression on this bird's face, just looking at the droplet. And if you probably zoom in, you'll see the reflection of the droplet in his eye. I, I like this because it's just pretty. The colors make it, the reflection makes it, and again, perfect background at Zimunga. I waited for this fish eagle to land after it sat in a tree for hours. It finally decided to come down to the water to drink. The light was perfect, and while I loved the shot, I still prayed to all the gods I knew that he'd, he'd take off in the right direction, and he did. I have a preference for creative photography. This particular shot was taken on a really cloudy, overcast day. It was taken at the car park of Beacon Isle in Plettenberg Bay. Again, I have the entire bird, but I was looking for a unique crop composition because the image quality wasn't excellent due to the light. And I quite like the effect of this fan. This was taken at one of the rivers in Dar es Salaam. I had spent a whole week there listening to speeches and having meetings. And you get to a point where you just want to be alone. And I think this image encapsulated my mood and I call this solitude. This is my ultimate favorite and for two particular reasons. One, it took me just about forever to get the shot. <laughs> So I photograph herons quite often at Lone Hill, and I've always dreamed of having the eye just peer between fingers of feathers. I got this shot quite unexpectedly. Uh, we went to Zabulu to get photos of marsh owls on a very cold day. And after a long afternoon, quite uneventful, I saw this heron approaching a perch in front of the hide. And I shot it as a joke. Um, and I only found the hidden potential in it when I downloaded the image when I got home. The second reason I like it so much is that it was a finalist in one of the first competitions I entered. And it also acquainted me with the BirdLife South Africa team. In particular, Mark Anderson and later Phoebe Barnard, to whom I'm eternally grateful for the continuous support they give me.